What's up, squad? It's Wednesday morning right now. I've been uh, MIA for the vlog up to this point. It's February 21st, about 9 a.m. Uh, this has been a super, super, super busy weekend. A week for me, I've been working on a lot of things and I wanna let you guys in on what I'm doing. So, where do I start? All right, let's start with some little bit of motivation to kind of segue into the things I'm doing. I think about this all the time and I think about like what makes me or what's going to make me successful, right? I'm not successful at it by any measure right now, but I think about you know, like I see myself where I where I'm gonna be in three to five years. Not where I want to be. Like where where I'm really gonna be in three to five years. Where I'm striving for. I'm gonna be hitting my goals. Why do I? Why do I think I'm gonna get there? And other people that I know, I don't think could do the same things that I do. I don't think I'm smarter than most of the people I know. I don't think I'm more like talented. I don't think I can name three or four of my friends that I think are smarter than me. I could I can name people that I think are more talented than me at their respective fields or their respective hobbies or passions or whatever. I just finished reading Crush It and this is kind of why I'm touching on it, Gary Vee's book. This goes back to last episode when I was talking about, like he's gonna be a five times best-selling author. He is a horrible writer, right? And that goes with me, like I'm building a brand through fantasy football. That doesn't mean I'm a great fantasy football analyst. I'm just building the brand through like hustle, consistency and those kind of things. And it made me think that the number one thing about being successful or getting out there, in my opinion, is being able to be resourceful. This is what I think it is. I think being resourceful is being able to come across a problem, not a problem, it doesn't even mean to, it's not like, how do I explain this? Being, just being able to figure shit out. Just being able to figure shit out. Asking questions is always good if you're around the right people, right? I have no problem when I was working with my companies asking people questions when I didn't understand an answer. But 95% of the time, you could figure out the answer on your own. And this has been the pathway for me for every single thing I've done. Up to this point with all my content, I videotape, I edit, I built two websites for myself. I learned how to upload content. I learned how to make thumbnails. I learned how to write the descriptions. I learned how to write blog posts with proper SEO. I learned all these things. I was never taught any of these things, but I'm resourceful enough to go out and figure out how to do it, right? Use Google, use YouTube, use all these things that will teach you how to do it. We have unlimited information. And I figure like when I think about these things, I always run across, like when I start thinking about things, they seem to pop up all the time. Like one of these uh, people I follow on Instagram, he's a really well known like kid, I guess you want to say, called the rich 20 something, Dan D. Piazza or whatever. And his uh, Instagram was like a picture or whatever. And then it says, part of what makes the greats so great is their ability to figure challenging situations out, AKA resourcefulness. Oh, I didn't even see that the first time I read it. Look at Elon Musk, not a rocket scientist figured that shit out. We have a limited time on this earth with essentially no rules for what we can't do. So if you want something, figure it out. I guarantee you that you can because someone else probably already has. And that's what I, that, you know, that's what I go back to. And I'm not saying that because I saw him do that post. And this is just something I've always thought. Like I've always been super, super resourceful and been able to figure shit out on my own. Anyone can, it's just about knowing where to look, putting the time in and figuring out what it is that you want to learn. Like if someone, and I hesitate to say these things because people probably think I'm pointing them, picking on them in these videos, but I'll have people DMing me, I'll have people texting me and be like, how do I do this? What should I do here? Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, literally just fucking Google it. Like be resourceful for yourself and figure it out. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. All right. So anyways, I finished reading Crush It and you know, a lot of the stuff in here is for people who are kind of beginning what I'm doing, right? He's, he speaks on how content is king. He speaks on building a following is all about consistency and patience, 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 patience. Like if he ever talks to anyone, like I, I, I listen to a lot of his podcasts, his Q and A's, his keynotes. If he talks to anyone who's under the age of like 30, he'll be like, shut the fuck up, put your head down and work for the next until you're 29 and then see where your content has br brought you. All right, so I don't really need the beginning steps like motivation, that kind of stuff, because I'm already kind of in the grit with that. Um, my head is down, I'll be working for the next X amount of years on what I'm doing. I have no problem with that. I'm not, I don't care what other people think about me. I don't care that m some of my friends my age are getting ahead and I am still like here right now. It's fine, I don't need that. But what I did take away from him is the ability to not get, I guess, emotional about a platform. Business is all about building a brand. You build a brand through these platforms, like these social media platforms that help you hit every part of the world, right? You can connect with anyone at any moment through these, but you can't get emotional about a single platform, right? You cannot say like YouTube went away tomorrow. A lot of my following would be lost. 
but that's why I'm building up an email list. That's why I'm building up a Twitter following. And that's why I started uh, an Instagram account for the brand BDGE underscore fantasy football. And I will be posting on that pretty much daily, five to seven times a week. And I'm also starting to, this is pretty cool if you guys want to listen up here. I'm starting to do an Amazon Alexa briefing. So what is that? So those, those things that people are buying from Amazon or from Google, the Google Home or the uh, Amazon Echo or whatever it is, Alexa, those like the, they're like speakers basically, but you could talk to them, right? They're like Siri, but in an actual product. So Gary V has been talking about for the last like three years, how voice is the next big thing voice, right? He talked about, he built his original business on Google AdWords, right? Google search. When that first came out, he realized how underpriced it was. And he dominated that and built his wine business from like a million to 60 million using Google AdWords. The next thing he realized, this was back in like 20, 2008, when nothing was, when no, social media was not really a thing. He said social media is like the next wave of attention, right? That's what he does. He said he day trades attention. So he finds out where the attention is, finds out where it's underpriced, and then goes all in on it. So social media was the next thing, right? He was like the one of the first people on YouTube. He was one of the first people to build a, a Twitter following of like a million people. Now, you know, all the social medias are huge now, obviously. But basically he says, don't get romantic with a platform because they're always changing. And you gotta think about it. Like, no, you love Instagram now, you love YouTube now, you love whatever, right? Where was Instagram three years ago? Non-existent. Where is Twitter gonna be in three years? Non-existent. What are gonna be existent in three years? We don't know, but there's gonna be three to five apps that we use every single day constantly that are not even created yet, right? And that's how you have to be thinking if you're a marketer, if you're in business for yourself at any point. I, th I think people think about business as much more technical than it needs to be. Business nowadays is marketing. I like to think of marketing as building your business like 101. It's not just like a side piece of your business, it is business. Once you're getting past word of mouth, once you're getting past your friends, your family, and your immediate community, marketing is the only way you can grow. So if you don't understand that part of your business, you will never succeed. Oh, so getting back to voice, yes. So we're talking about Amazon Alexa. So Gary Vee could have been the very first, or one of the very first investors in Uber. He passed on it in the initial rounds, passed on it a couple times before he realized why he should invest. And he's like, I'm not investing in Uber. Uber is not transportation. Uber is time. You're investing in time. People are using Uber because it saves you time. And he realized like that's the reason why he's going all in on voice. And you can see now, if you listen, if you listen to the news, if you listen to, if you see certain commercials, you're gonna see Amazon, Google, these types of companies push very heavily into the voice, into, uh, into the voice, I guess, spectrum over the next couple of years. And it's gonna be huge. Cause think about it. If you listen to podcasts, if you listen to anything really, like in your car, whatever it is, it's all passive. You don't have to be paying attention to it while it plays. So basically like you're giving yourself an optimal path to like, hmm, how do I put this? You could be learning all the time, right? Or you could be taking in information while you're doing other shit so it does not intrude. When you look at anything else, right? Like social media, especially in the marketing ways, that's intrusive, right? It's always like interrupting all your shit. But imagine waking up in three to five years, right? It's very, very early right now, but they'll get the, the UX down and they'll eventually figure out how to do this smoothly and make it good. You're gonna wake up and you're gonna say, Amazon Alexa, give me a daily, a daily briefing. And depending on what apps you have set up, right? This is where I'm, this is why I'm going in on this, right? Depending on what apps you have set up, say like you're just, I don't know, a typical person, you have four apps, right? Weather, sports, you have a random hobby about fucking photography and something else. You say daily briefing, right? It'll go through the daily briefing. Amazon Alexa will be like, hey Nick, uh, today's gonna be 65 and sunny, 30% chance of rain. Sports, your favorite team is Boston. Won five to two last night. Pedro Martinez fucking got a win and whoever saved it, these are the box score stats. Photography, here are the latest news. Sony's coming out with a new blah, blah, blah. And it's all gonna be very, very personalized to you. So what I'm trying to do, right? Twitter saturated, YouTube will eventually be saturated with fantasy football. I'm gonna create a daily briefing, or I already started yesterday, I put out the first one, where Every morning, and these daily briefings can be a very short, so like a very short version of, of audio. Usually like a minute, two minutes. And uh, I gotta put this fucking down, this thing down. I don't know why I keep walking around. Whew. So they're like a minute, two minutes long, right? But if I can crack into that in fantasy football before anyone else does, then I could be like a thought leader in that specific region because if voice becomes as big as he thinks it's gonna be, think about anyone who got in on Instagram early, Twitter early, YouTube early, any of these things early, they're set for life. You know what I mean? Like they are so popular 
and so big and they have so much opportunity at their hands with the following that they have that it does they like, again this goes back to like you don't need to actually be the number one person in the world but if you were the first fitness model that started showing her ass on IG, you probably have 10 million followers to this day, but you're not the best looking person on there. You don't have the best body on there. You probably are not the most motivational person on there. You just happen to hit Plymouth Rock first. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, find the attention where it's going to be, where it's underpriced, you know, where it is and attack that before other people do. So I'm starting to do Amazon Alexa briefings now so that in two years when this shit pops off, I will be the first fantasy football briefing that people will find on there. That makes sense. So we have Instagram going, we got Twitter, we got YouTube, we got the Amazon Alexa. That's that. Otherwise I've been working. I just emailed back the uh, 15 or 20 people that reached out to me saying they would be interested in helping the brand BDGE this summer uh, with fantasy football content, blogging and stuff. See, I reached out talking about I needed help with SEO. I needed help with a couple other things. Now, SEO, the only reason I needed help with it is because I don't know anything about it. So yesterday I went to Starbucks and for like six hours I researched SEO. I watched videos, I read blog articles on how to better set up your articles, how to better set up your website so that it can get up there on the Google search rankings. That's being resourceful. The other things I need help with, video editing, blog content, that's that's not me not being resourceful. That's because I need more of it pushed out. And I can't do it all myself because I don't have enough time to do that. I'm wrapping up the campaign with the real estate company. The uh, $1,000 spend actually hit last night, probably around midnight. So I emailed them, I was like, listen, the, the budget's gonna be spent. Do you want me to keep going? We're seeing really good results right now. I don't wanna fuck that up. He said, yeah, keep going. I'll schedule a call next week. By then we will choose who we want to work with long-term. The campaign has gone well. We're seeing CPL's cost per leads dip below $3 now. They started at nine, down to five, down to three. So we improved week upon week upon week, which is good. None of you guys probably even understand what I, I meant by CPL. Also working on getting the package together. My, my main goal, my idea for this summer is to provide a package for fantasy football, to provide a package to sell to people. Last year I did the draft guide, sold that for like $4.99. Sold about 200 copies. This year I wanna offer so much more value on top of what the draft guide was. I wanna offer like a community to people. That's how I wanna monetize. I wanna offer a lot of different things within this package. I wanna do the draft guide. I wanna do a private Facebook group where only people who pay can get in, meaning that only people that are really like passionate or willing to pay for it, for entrance into it, you know, obviously they're the only people that would really care about it. For there, you could build a serious community, I believe, but we'll see how, you know, if that works with the market, I don't know. I want to offer uh, a huge spreadsheet, like a members only section on my website that has a spreadsheet with like every statistic you could possibly find about fantasy football like on the internet in one database in one place talking about all regular numbers passing yards all regular yardage touchdowns that kind of stuff i want to add red zone numbers goal line numbers inside the five inside the ten i want to i want to add snap snap count snap percentages of players on their teams all this stuff inside in one master sheet that i could you know post week by week so everyone has a, a can narrow it down and it's just basically a master spreadsheet. That's something I want to include in the package. I have all these different ideas that I want to include and that's why I'm getting ahead of the game now. I know it's only like people are probably like you're crazy for doing all this for fantasy football. It's February. The season just ended but the wheels are turning. I want to get ahead of the curve so that when the time comes it's ready and then I want to if I could do this right like this is all organic stuff right selling to people on YouTube that follow my channel but it, it's almost a perfect storm for me because I'm already in Facebook and Instagram marketing on the side, right? Like how many fantasy football bloggers or guys with big podcasts or whatever you know also know how to market themselves in social media outside of organic. So I'm thinking about putting aside maybe $1,000, $2,000 to use to market uh, some of the products that I wanna sell this summer and see how that works. These are all the different things I've been working on. If you have any questions, obviously hit me down below and I will help you out. And if you're interested in helping me out with BDGE, of course, drop uh, drop me an email, nick.urcolano at bdgeat.com and I will hit y'all back. Thank you for listening to my crazy ass. What's going on, my Alexa peoples? It's your boy, Nick Ercolano here with Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. It's Wednesday, February 21st, which means we're coming at you with a wild stat. Wednesday, I'm gonna drop a crazy stat I found from the 2017 fantasy football season. There are four other crazy stats that I found. I made a blog article with five of them in total, which I'll tell y'all how to find after I give you the one stat that you're gonna get. Like this is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about being resourceful. Like, I have no idea how to make an Amazon Alexa skill or briefing, right? 
I researched enough. You need to have an account for Amazon management council where you create a bucket and you would upload every single morning a piece of code that you have to tell Amazon where they're pulling your briefing from. So you would have to create a little mini video, you would have to have the MP3, and then you would have to have a JSON file as they call it. But those are little things like, how do I create a JSON file? I have to have this certain piece of software. How do I upload into this bucket? How do I create a skill in the beginning? There's like four different things I had to go through. I had the management console, the developer portal for Amazon Alexa skills, the Amazon developer platform, and then the Alexa dashboard where you can actually find the skill and see it. So these are like all ones that are already created here you can see like big ones that are jeopardy whatever jurassic bark right if you got in early and your question of the day 2300 reviews already if you're the person behind that in five years when that has 50,000 reviews like you're gonna be able to monetize that very easily boom there i am bing bang boom and these are things i had to figure out i have no these are so far over my head me having to do this stuff but you just figure it out and then you do it over and over and over again until the point where you know how to do it that's life my friends that is life figuring shit out that you don't know how to do because no one knows how to do anything from the start So it's Thursday night. Last night we saw Black Panther. It was good. Really good. A little overrated in my opinion. Doesn't need to be 98 or Rotten Tomatoes. Very good movie though. I enjoyed. National Mark Day today. It's my birthday. About to go grab anywhere from 2 to 14 Mars. I don't really know how this is going to end up. Oh, I know how this vlog is going to end up. It's going to end right here. Just wanted to say goodbye. Wanted to thank you for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed, thumb it up. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see y'all next week. Week. Big five zero. Ooh, we closing in on a year. I need to do something good for that video. Peace. You make